In Ajiri State, she said it many times in the past, that there's nothing that can be worked out. Let's get in and see how she can explain this to us, because I know that there are also many people that believe this. Please help us to understand what you mean. I just believe in love. I believe in tolerance. I believe in kindness. I believe in having a change of heart. I believe in having a change of attitude. I believe people can be repentant. I believe people can have a change of behavior. It doesn't mean you should blindly stay in something that may be physically harmful to you, if there's physical violence, if there's a chance that you're going to lose your life. But if your life physically is not in danger, I believe you can work things out. And I will not advise anyone that I love to think in that way, and I will share why in the course of the conversation. Tope, would you like to share your view? Yeah, unfortunately, Ajuri, I tragically and unfortunately actually lost a relative um, oh yeah so sorry yeah. so sorry and um that's probably what, one of the reasons why i'm extremely passionate about this and that i know that socially culturally religiously we want people to stick together and to try I to work out but sometimes the problem again starts from day one i mean when i'm doing a series now that I call unequal. You know, the Bible talks about, I don't know how many of us here are Christians, but the Bible teaches us about unequal yokes, that we should not be unequally yoked to a non-believer. And as a young girl, I used to feel God the way I do, that is not a Christian at all. But as I've grown older, I've found that you find yourself in certain circumstances where you know you're unequally yoked as far as your values, your aspirations, your dreams, your education, financial standing. And if you are not really smart enough to know of these before you get into relationships, you find a lot of women suffer. An example is Osinachi, who stayed and tried to work things out of blessed memory, stayed and tried to work things out, probably for religious purposes, and she was hammered and beaten until she died. She's now history. But it took her life. It took that lady losing her life for so many other women to rise up and speak up. So where there's violence, where you are unequally yoked to this person, because someone that says they love you will not hurt you. You don't hurt who you love. And even if the person you love is upset, you look for a way to make peace. You don't go mean to the person. So sometimes when it costs you, your, me, my life, or any woman her life, or any man his life, I don't think that thing is worth fighting for. I, I, I beg to disagree. I've I lost a sister, and so many other women have died from the effects of abuse and been in the wrong relationships, being unequally yoked. I think, I, think already responded to, I, think she, I think she referred to where there's physical violence and there's danger to your life because you might be physically hurt and even sent I to your that. I you that physically in so danger. I think you said except that, right? So besides yeah, yeah. that, so is that, so there's an so exception way of it can be worked out. Hmm? I'm, I'm, saying, I'm throwing this back to you, Jerry, that so do you, would you agree that there's an exception? And don't forget, violence, physical violence is just one form of violence. Violence can also be psychological. Violence can be financial. Violence can be sexual. Violence, can be silence. Is, violence can be silent. So we really need to look at what violence means. So it's not when he beats me and I feel there's a threat to my life or you know even the silent treatment enough when a woman literally goes psychologically mad psychotic deeply depressed that is violence against a human being like you and i don't think anybody should try and work anything out because they don't have scars on their bodies doesn't mean they don't have scars in their heart 
Okay, thank you so much Papa, for sharing that. I I lean I lean towards actually I'm on the same side as you because I I suppose that perhaps it's possible that Ajiri is is saying what she's saying based on her own personal experiences. But because of what I have been through myself, I'll tell you this. Trauma comes in so many ways. And sometimes you may need to experience trauma to actually begin to see life differently. And I think that our upbringing doesn't expose us to so many things. And because of that, we're not aware of the real facts of life. There are some things that we are shielded from because of our upbringing. And because of that, we're not even aware of the, some real strong things in life. And we may have trauma from family, we may have trauma from religious connections, or we may have trauma from romantic relationships. So any of those, and even more, other things that I don't know about, will give you, will put you in a position where you will begin to see things beyond your own personal experience. And so for that reason, I know that there are many things that cannot be worked out. And as I say, for me, everything starts from the foundations. So when we're talking about a relationship and you think that there is nothing that can be worked out as long as it's not about physical violence, I will go, I will say that that's a, a very big no. And I would want us to pay more attention to these types of statements because when we say those things, we encourage people to feel, somebody feels that unless there is physical violence where I'll be beaten to death, there's nothing that can be worked out because I should be patient and we can talk about it and all that. Here is what we forget. Everything starts with the foundation. So if I have entered a relationship, I'll go as far as even talking about marriage, which I don't like to talk about. I prefer to talk about relationships that haven't led to marriage because if you listen to me, I am. I have a zero tolerance thing where even with marriage for somebody to be oppressed. So if you listen to me, you're going to end up saying, oh, this woman is encouraging me to. No, but the thing is, I know that your marriage most of the time was based on falsehood. So I already know that it shouldn't even be existing. That's the thing. I have so many um, emails that I'm going to start reading out soon because I know, I've seen that a lot of marriages were not founded on the proper foundation. And before those emails started coming, the reason they started coming is because, because I mentioned it already on this platform and then I started getting those messages. And that is what, what the problem really is. If people can understand better to create a strong foundation, then we can now talk about anything can be worked out. Anything can be worked out only if the foundation was right in the first place. Because I say to you that there are people who deliberately target people because they want to marry this person because they already know I'm taking this innocent girl who knows nothing about life. And I already know that when she gets into this marriage with me, she's not going to do anything to disrupt it. Whatever I do, she will accept and all she will, she will be striving for the rest of her life to make it work. So you have people who have been married for 16 years. I share that one with you of somebody who, even before they got married, he was already doing all these things and maltreating her, making her work for the relationship. And then when they got into the marriage, she continues to strive. And he started to sexually starve her. He started to emotionally starve her. He wouldn't even speak with her through the marriage. And so this is someone who already knew that there wasn't going to be a marriage in the real sense of it. But they, they wanted to have a family, to have children. So how are you going to work this out? And even if you're going to work it out, to me, it's like, why am I going to throw away 20 years of my life working this thing out? In all that time, I'm going to lose everything and I'll get to menopause. What is, what am I doing? And, I, and, and, then, and then I'll start shriveling. I will never experience even sexual joy. What, what are we talking about here? Maybe you are saying this because you haven't thought about this. And I also know that a lot of women from our society have, maybe they, they just won't express anything. Maybe they don't care about sex, but it's an essential part of life. How do you get married to someone who you don't even talk with? You don't have any conversations. What do you do? 
There are those who won't even talk to you, but they will still come to have intercourse with you. Those who will not have any kind of relationship with you at all. What do you do? How do you even live a life where you don't have any conversations? How do you get married? Like How do you get to the point of getting married? How? I just explained it to you. This that was a real person that I had that phone call. I explained it to you and I told you what happened in that case. They got married because he started doing this thing and she was striving. Just like the people we talked about meeting at the airport and all that. She saw it before they got married, but she kept on working, working, thinking, I will show him how much I care. I will show him how, how much of a good person I am. And they got into the marriage and she continued to do it. And he, she would get home and she would ask him, why are you treating me like this? And he would say different, different things to her, even to the point of saying you're smelling. But those things are not true because he was doing them before the marriage and he already knew all he wanted was to marry and to have a family. So how can you say that every, anything can be worked out? But let's go to something else that we don't talk about in our society. We don't realize that people have mental problems, sometimes brain wiring. Oh yeah, yeah. Brain, brain wiring. <laughs> Look, mental health is something that is very, very stigmatized in our part of the country. I mean, and the only people we refer to as mad are people we call vagrant psychotics. So that means they've lost touch with reality. They're on the streets. They're, you know, eating from the garbage and just carrying tattered clothes and all. That's what we think mad is. But we now know that someone can be well-dressed, well put together. And a good mathematician. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can be a good scientist, a good doctor. Can be a fantastic scientist, can be a doctor like me, and the person is actually MAD in the true sense of the word. That's because mental health has a very broad spectrum. And one of the biggest ones that I see, I mean, is a term that is used very loosely, is a personality disorder called narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder. And this is a behavior that people start to exhibit because of certain things they experienced when they were younger. This would usually be people that, people that have always been allowed to have their way, you know, mommy's boy, pamper, they have this sense of entitlement, they're very grandiose, they get away with everything. And you have these sick people that don't know about relationships, that don't know how to manage relationships, and some people have actually postulated that these are individuals that physically, they're fully grown, they're mature, they have the deep voice, they have their beard, and this can also be a woman, fully grown and mature, but their brain is still functioning at, at that of a five-year-old to a seven-year-old. And you find that these people lack something called empathy. They can't relate to people. They don't understand what relationships are like. And when they don't have their way, remember, they grew up having their way. So even when they get into relationships and they cannot have their way, they throw a tantrum. They fight back by giving you the silent treatment. They're used to using people. So they are real users. But when they want something, they will do everything to get what they want. They will love bomb you as a woman if you're unsuspecting. You know, they'll send you flowers every week. They'll choke you with love. They will One almost second. take the lay. So we're talking about these people with this personality disorder. So they come into relationships. You are a full-grown, mature, healthy adult. And you have to now deal with somebody that's sick. But they don't look sick and they're not in rags because they're not, in, they're, they're not mad in the true sense of the word. So now we don't have to call everybody a narcissist because that's what I find. Everybody's like, oh, he's a narcissist. No, yeah, no, yeah. No. I was also going to say that. I, and I it's, it's, it's yeah. a big spectrum. So some yeah. people definitely are carrying on all this, either a personality disorder, anxiety, depression, uh -huh. and they bring these into relationships. And, uh -huh. you know, we just need to be really cognizant of the fact that sometimes people really just need help. And yes, we need to make it all and the right kind of support, then they, they, they might be able to function well in relationships. Yes. So, right. yeah, that's what I have to say there. We something we need to acknowledge there shouldn't be any stigma around it. And people yes. with mental health problems should get help. Um, they help yes. that. They okay, I love that last part that you added that it's something that we should acknowledge and people shouldn't, people shouldn't, um, put a stigma to it because sometimes. 
uh, okay, you were talking about a mommy's boy or a girl that has been spoiled and been used to having her way. Sometimes it's also from people who were never given relevance. Maybe they were maybe they were subdued so much that they decided to develop this this other attitude to make themselves come up to what they, they don't really feel that they are. So sometimes it's an inferiority complex of not feeling enough that makes a person a narcissist. But yes, as you said, I'm so glad you mentioned, I do not really like to use the word anymore because it's like everybody is now a narcissist. And it's not. I, again, sometimes it's the person who never really wanted to be in a relationship and they're doing everything to leave me alone. They're being cold and the other person now decides, oh, they're a narcissist. No, it's not always that. We have to be more, we have to take cognizance, take this into cognizance. Sometimes people, we can be in a relationship with someone like this who is mentally sick and, and you don't even realize, you think that they're just nasty. They're not just being nasty. They don't even, they, they're not even able to understand what they're doing. They're not able to interpret it the way that a normal person would interpret it. So there you are thinking everything can be worked out. We'll have a conversation. I will be patient. It's not going to work out unless they go and start to take treatment for it. And that's a long-term thing. So if you're aware, it's better to be aware that this is what you're dealing with. And I'm going to sit through, and that's when we now talk about in sickness and in health. At this point, when you recognize that this person is mentally sick and you want to sit through it with the person, they're going for treatment, you're going to be patient because, oh, she doesn't realize that this her behavior is causing me this amount of pain oh he doesn't realize that what he's doing he thinks it's normal is this way then i can say yes go for it as a partner you're married for in sickness and in health now you both of you have to agree and recognize that this person is sick and they are going to go for treatments even if it's going to take 10 15 years and you are ready to be in it for the long haul you are on the right track but to not actually know or to not acknowledge it and think that just talking or just praying is going to do it, it's not because there is something fundamentally wrong. And if it's not dealt with, there isn't going to be a change. So for us to counsel people or to advise people to be patient and we have to know what we're advising people about, isn't it? Topic? We actually have to know because otherwise you're leading them down the wrong path. And they're going to be having the hope on something that is never going to come to fruition. And so now that we've talked about it this way, when you are talking to people, I would wish, I would hope that we can keep this at the back of your mind, you know, in encouraging people to find out what is actually going on. Because if there's something wrong in a relationship, it, it doesn't just come out of thin air, it comes from somewhere. Instead of solving that thing and praying about that thing, or being patient about that thing, let's investigate it and find out what the source of this problem is. Instead of treating symptoms, we go to the root of it and find out what is going on so that we can handle it. I don't know if you want to add something to that, Ajiri or Tokwe. Yeah, um, I know we deal with people, um, everybody has, I mean, I mean, it has been said that everybody has a little bit of cuckoo in their head. Everybody has a little bit of um, it's on the range of uh, you know mental stability. There are some you know a little tendency. You know, one out of every, I think two out of every four. I think that's the statistic. Now, doctor, correct me. Um, in as much as relationships are for better for worse, if you are being emotionally traumatized physically endangered and mentally traumatized then maybe you should take a break assess things and decide on what to do okay did you want to add something to it so i just think that we need to if you feel your partner might I, I, number one we need to desist from making a diagnosis you know we need to desist from saying oh you are crazy you're mad is it you're a narcissist you are a bitch you're a, that we should desist from it if we feel someone really needs help genuinely needs help is willing to take help we must get that help for them 
you understand and it's not enough some people would misbehave and then blame it on anxiety or depression and then they go but i don't want to go for counseling i don't need to see the doctor i can fix this myself no i don't agree somebody that is ready if you're ready to work on your relationship you must be willing to take the necessary steps and actions to 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 be a better version of yourself to address any mental health issues that you might be dealing with and then come out a better person and then you have a partner that's going to support you through that as opposed to just saying hey you know it all you're fine you're not going to take medication and you're not going to engage in therapy that for me is a red flag if someone isn't ready to cooperate and work towards getting better um, in the relationship awesome that's another reason why we must self-reflect because if i'm in a relationship with Tokwe and so I constantly complains about me doing this, this, that, that, that. And then I get out of that relationship because I'm sick of her nagging and complaining. And I get into a relationship with Ajiri. And Ajiri starts to complain about, you know, it's going to tell me that something is going on with me. Now, instead of getting in and out of relationships, or I just remain with Ajiri now, and I, I, I start getting in touch with different people to have the relationships with them which will last only as long as until they realize that something is off with me because this is a coping mechanism that's why we see sometimes that people cheat because maybe they recognize that something is wrong with them but they don't know what it is so the coping mechanism now is let me get someone who doesn't know me so that we can i can enjoy this relationship up until they discover that i am not normal and then I find another one. And then, <laughs> and then I keep doing that. So what really happens is that we are not going to have satisfaction or fulfillment. And sometimes you may be saying to yourself, but nothing is wrong with me because most of the time you're not even going to know that something is wrong with you, right? So it's you now feeling like relationships don't work because everybody's always ending up complaining. But what it is is something is wrong with me. And now if I care enough, I need to go and find out what's going on with me so that I can have fulfillment. Because I think that as human beings, as social, social beings, we are, this is, what, this is how, what we're wired for. We're wired for connection. And when our connections are not making sense, we cannot have complete, we, can, we feel like we feel off, something is off. And instead of ignoring, let's understand that maybe I should see a therapist to find out what is going on with me. Why is it that my, my relationships are always being unsatisfactory? Why are people always complaining? What could be going on with me? And that's what we should do instead of ignoring and pretending that everything is okay and just, you know, living that life where every night I'm wondering what's actually going on. Why can I not have fulfillment? And that's where our society needs to become more conscious of brain wiring and mental mental health so that we know what's going on with us and we can treat it. And I think that one of the things that we were fooled with is the idea that we are higher animals, right? Because you will see that a goat will be, a goat or a bird will approach the other gender, <laughs> the, other, the, other, the other, the female. And when that male goat or bird comes and things aren't working out, the female will reject him, right? So, or if a goat goes to a, a, a wire fence and is trying to go through it and the horns get locked in the wire fence, next time he sees that wire fence, he's not going to go there. But as human beings, we keep on trying to make sense of things that don't make sense. So it makes me feel like we've been sold this idea that we're higher animals. I think we should go home and ask ourselves if we're really higher animals if we keep on putting ourselves in things that don't make sense and are not working, and we are insisting because simply because we have the ability to speak a language and we, we think through things, then we can sit and think, okay, maybe it's this or maybe it's that. Why don't you sub submit yourself to examination so that you can treat what it is that is going wrong? Instead of dealing with symptoms, go to the root of it. That should make sense to one or two of us out there. Make sure this is someone that will be open 
to orthodox treatment, for example, not someone that will say, oh, no, 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 you have to use this and use that or take you to this um, native doctor or whatever. It depends on your own personal values. But I think ask for help for, from people or intervention from people that you know would be able to recommend the necessary and the needed intervention for that individual. Yes, tackling things by patience and prayer is not going to be the solution for every situation. Plastic situations require drastic measures. If you really want to get these things solved, we can't lie to ourselves. There is hard work for a lot of the things that we want and we just have to do the necessary work. However ugly it might seem, that's what life is about. And that's where we now talk about relationships being hard when we understand exactly what it is and we are ready both of us are ready to tackle it and then we can now say okay we're in this for the long haul we're going to be patient and we're going to work through this that's where we can see that things can be resolved not when we're not even aware and we're fooling ourselves thinking that we can kneel down and pray about it or be patient and it will resolve so with that we end this conversation if you're in a relationship and you're thinking that this person is mean realize that sometimes they don't even, they're not even aware of what they're doing because they have a condition that makes them unaware that their behavior is abnormal or unusual. With that, we'll end this conversation. Thank you for being with us.